Good now? Yes, sir. We are great. Here we are. Hey! We already got some people here. Oh, yeah. Hello from Australia. We got the goat. Someone's got to turn us down in the background. I can hear us already. It's good, y'all. We got backlog here. Let's go. We've got people here today. It's Easter, y'all. It's today. is Jesus' resurrection. And what a greater day to talk about the resurrection of my boy. The yes. world's greatest. Buff, the Stuff Bagwell. Welcome back to Buff and Stuff Podcast. Here we are again. We're live. I'm glad you guys are here. Happy Easter, Annette85. We got Buff here. Buff Bagwell. Buff, Buff, Buff. This is his show. Um, what we do here, just a little bit before we get started, what this show is, is obviously we are in love with wrestling. We are in love with WCW. We are in love with the NWO. We are more in love with this man right here, Marcus Alexander, a.k.a. Buff Bagwell. That's what this show is, but it's not just that. We also talk about journeys with sobriety jerk about life we talk about everything here so we're gonna live relive some of the glory days we're gonna talk about his journey and this is episode two so today we're actually gonna talk about this is called risen from the ashes you see it in the description risen from the ashes and in parentheses like a great phoenix i'm sorry buff because that's how i feel like a great phoenix rising from the ashes a resurrection story so we're going to listen to this man talk about his whole story about his journeys how it first started we're going to hear about i guess he's going to tell his stories and stuff like today it's not just me steering it well we're, we're also we're you know we're going to ask him some questions when it's time but we're going to hear you tell us your story Tell us your journey. Obviously, I'll start it off with a question so that you can get it started. But today, that's what it is. Is there anything that you would like to say before we get started, my friend? No, man, just uh, just excited to be here and just glad, glad that uh, the podcast has come up at the time, you know, that, that the, the Vice show came out with my story. Uh, it really just they did a great job telling that story, man. And, you know, it, it's, it's a pretty deep, it's not a pretty deep story. It's a really deep story. And for, 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 for dark side of the ring to be able to put it, put it in a, in a show and for it to come across as good as it did, because again, I can tell it a thousand times that they've got to reenact it to make sure the people are doing it right. And they got to go by what I tell them. And what I love about it is you had five or six different voices speaking and it all told one story, which, which just is what makes my life impactful and makes it mean something, which is it's, it really happened. And, I, and it came across really great because people were really took it like, man, you know, God, and, the, and what I got out of it was they said, you know, you had a crazy life, but you, now you you live to tell about it. That's right. And I and ironically, it's it's exactly what's happened. Now we got our podcast going, buff and stuff, and I can tell and talk about things that people are. They got them. We got them all caught up on the last twenty years, and now we can talk about it for the next twenty years. That's so right. I love it. And we get to get into every piece in depth and in detail because you know I rewatched the. You know, Buff and the Bagwells. Of course, I had to. We were doing this episode. So I rewatched it on Vice. Amazing, by the way. If anyone who hasn't seen it, I would totally say Dark Side of the Ring, the Buff Bagwell episode. If you didn't watch it, you're silly. Check it out. I rewatched it. And they did tell the story. But now this is it. We have a show. He's got a show. Yes. And you get to get in depth. You, like, we couldn't have chose a better time. But now no. we can get in depth. We have fans here live right now. They say, hey, look, right now, Annette said they did a it's wonderful job. Brilliant. Shout out to Vice. You're such a legend. The GOAT. Happy Easter all. See, we're live on Twitch. That's what it is. I'm glad y'all are here today. But see, but now you get to get in depth. You get to talk to this man. This is great. So Let's do it. Let's get into it. Let's get into it. All right. So this is about sobriety. Let's tell your story. How did, like, when... When did you, when's the very first time, I don't know, you, you got stoned or anything like that? When did it all start? What was the very first time in your life? Everybody has a starting point and mine, believe it, and usually a lot of times 
it, it comes out of something that that I've that I've learned. It comes out of things that happen medically to you. As a young as a young teenager, I was I thought I was a really chronic snorer. And friends would come over and like, God, you, you're snoring horribly, man. You sound horrible. And at, when I would deer hunt with my family, I had to sleep in an extra camper because I snored so bad. And it was just a crazy snoring thing. And I was a 120-pound kid soaking wet. So it wasn't that I was a fat kid and snoring. So all I ever heard was snore, snore, snore. But... As I got older and got into wrestling, um, it was still snoring, but at, a very, at, a, at the young age during deer hunting, I was very tired all day long. Okay. I would wake up and just, I would sleep in class and, and the teacher would get on to me and I didn't, but I, there was something wrong with me. I didn't know it well. Yeah. I wasn't, I wasn't diagnosed yet and that's what the problem was, but looking back on it, it was it was uh, severe sleep apnea. Okay. So from having sleep apnea and being diagnosed with it at 25, I obviously had it from an age of 12 years old and on, but there wasn't a word called sleep apnea. So you just felt like crap at school. Oh, you man. felt like crap at football practice and, and you just were tired all the time. I mean, I literally, I used to get in trouble for it. I could sit in a chair and I would get whipped if I fell asleep. My father would whip me. Oh man! I mean, he, it sounds awful, and he's, and he's oh, he apologized man. to me ten thousand times. But over. it kept you awake. But it kept me awake. Well, that same father, I get into football, and at from twelve to sixteen, that's four years of what I know I had called severe sleep apnea, but no diagnosis of it. Just you feel tired, you don't feel good. So I became a very good football player, but I can remember coaches, I would be asleep before the game oh, and they would put my cleats on for me. What? And, and and I would get my cleats. I was a starting quarterback at Sprayberry High School. Superstar. I was, I, yes, football, baseball. We're going to put your cleats football. on, Mark. Coach would put my cleats on me and I'm asleep, brother, with drool coming out of my mouth. <laughs> well, that equaled, we had to do something about it. And... Back then, there were these there were these speed pills called fastens, and they were blue and white capsules. And my and there were diet pills. Anybody that's older than fifty, they know of a drug called fastens. Fasten. It was a prescription pill, prescription pill, white and blue tablets. Look them up, and Mark. They were just, huh? I told the Mark to look them up. Yeah, look them up. Fasten. Look them up, Mark. Like you know, type of something about your football days from my notes. Oh, okay, <laughs> yeah, okay. and they and they. You took the hit of speed, and I put in my wristband, and I'd get out there. Well, that wasn't enough. So that went to uh, a little bit of cocaine. Okay. So my father would give me a little bit of coke to put in my wristband, um, and I'd get to the game, and we'd go do pregame. And when we came back before we went out for kickoff, me, me and a buddy of mine would do the coke, and I would take the fasting, yeah. and I had a, I had a, oh, a football You were ready to go then. <laughs> Ready to go. Score hundred so points. That became, but that became a habit, of okay. course, and that became an addiction. So from a very young age, I was told, take something to fill up, to fix it, yeah, to fix it, yeah. And now, hear, hear me, not not up to fix to it. Fix it, okay. So to fix it was to go up for the football game, but then it became time to fix it to lay down. I got you to fix any problem. Exactly. That's why I use fix it. So if it was time to work out, I had to fix it. If it was time to go to the gym, fix it. If it fix was time it. to sleep, fix it. Time to wrestle, it's time to fix it. Gotcha. I learned how to fix Mark Bagwell. Okay. I learned how to fix it. Now that became, that came that came with a with a big price of addiction. But but and then what happened is then I get finally I get diagnosed at 25 years old of this, of this sleep, sleep apnea, yeah. they put a CPAP on my face and I'm cured from my sleep apnea, but, but not I'm not of cured of addiction. Of fix it. Yeah. I have it cured. Fix it. I got you. Uh, fix it is still right here. I was skinny 
it's time to get big, so I fixed it. <laughs> uh, it's time to go to the gym, fix it. Here's a new feature that uh, we just figured. You'll see that? You see that? You see that on the screen? Can you see that, Mark? If you yes. watch stream, everyone at home as well. If you watch stream, I was going to ask you: Do you have you have oh, to sleep with that? You can look for your and See what we're looking yes. up now, guys. Yes. Is that it? Do you still use that now? Do, do, can I mash it? Yeah, you can mash it. Okay, you'll see what we're looking at. It's interactive. That's me, brother. Hey, every night for twenty years, that's that's what I do. Okay. Every night CPAP, for 20 years, I go to bed with a CPAP machine. All right. And then when you're done, y'all, you just click the stop watching and you're right back. Oh, then, then, you, then you go back. I say, I did. Boom. I did. I got it. That was, that was really cool. Look at that. We're in the future already. Second episode. We're doing better. So tonight, when I get ready to go to bed, yeah. that mask will go on my face. So I was able to fix the problem of my sleep. But I wasn't able to fix the idea of me knowing I can fix me. I got you. So uh -oh. the addiction kept going. And then at WCW, what happened, WCW was hundreds of thousands of dollars a year, bosses, Pressure. jobs. Pressure. There was, there was what I call, what I call is a leash. There was a good leash that kept me good. And when the leash got cut, when the WWE fired me, when that got, leash got cut, depression Everything else set in for a for the perfect storm. I bet. And the perfect storm was me going off the deep end with with drugs, and it, and it did. It took a while, but it but it just was a slow, slow ending to to what was you know inevitable to be a bad ending. And and I would try to I would try to learn from a car wreck in 2012. The 2012 car wreck. You can't make this up. If you went back and looked in the I book, pull it up. I broke my neck yep. on April. 22nd, 1998. I was there, by the way. I was there. That was Columbia, South Carolina. You and Rick Steiner. I was there. It was for Thunder. Broke my heart, like, because you were my guy at the time. Yes. I was, I was 14, there, bro. 14, 14 years later, 14 years later, on the exact same day, I break my neck when I flip my Jeep. But on that Jeep wreck, I wasn't on drugs. I was, uh, I would go, but I still blame drugs. I blame it because I was home from rehab, but my body had a withdrawal seizure. And from that withdrawal seizure, I almost killed myself in a Jeep wreck. So it, the addiction just was always there, causing problems, and I just never could shake it, man. And then finally, I had the, I had the wreck in, in 2020. 2020. Now that's like, okay. That accident, that's like you crashed through a mall or something or a, a bus station bathroom? Like Yeah, it was a bus talk. station bathroom. What happened then? What was that? Dude, it was the same thing. I, I just was, you know, I'd been, I'd been on Xanaxes and I had got um, in the car, not, not, you know, not supposed to be behind the wheel, of course. Yeah, and, of course. And I did just think I'd be okay. And, and I wasn't okay. And I blacked out behind the wheel. And went behind, went into a behind the mall, uh, Cumberland Mall is a, a, a bathroom, men's and women's bathroom. Holy moly! On this one though, the reason this one upset me so bad is because on this one, I should have killed somebody on this one. Wow. There's no doubt. I mean, in the in the pictures I've got, yeah, that I'll I'll show y'all. In the pictures I've got, there's bicycles that are run over. So I think if I'd have had the visual. There were people jumping off their bikes, getting out of the way. You know, what I mean, just it was it had to be a horrific sight. But I was, I, and I'm, and the sad part is, I I'd have gone to prison forever, and I really wasn't there. You know, I mean, I was there, I was, but it, but I wasn't there. You yeah, know? it's not like you did it on purpose. You know what I mean? But this one, this one left a dent. Yeah, I injured my right knee to the point of never being able to fix it. I'm. I'm, I've cr I crippled myself, and so I the never really dove in on, on, it's on liquor, the, it's on but I really screen. dove into the liquor on this car wreck. Wow, okay. And I went deep, and, and then out of that, I shot the show. My road to recovery, or to try to get sober, was the furthest away from me. I was actually doing what people do, the really hard drug addicts do, which is isolate. I was isolating. I had, been, 
Everybody off. I don't Everybody need anybody off. to tell me anything. I could just live here. All I need is the booze, the pills. Anyone else can just go to hell, basically. And that's where I was at. I was mad at myself for my knee. My knee was not getting any better. It was getting worse and worse. I saw that. Yeah. And, and then and then Dallas shot that show called Change or Die. Yep. And I, saw that. And I said yes to it. So I would stay sober during the week. And Dallas thought I was staying sober the whole time. But as addicts do, they be, they're very good liars. So I became where I was staying sober during the week. And then and then as soon as I get home on the weekend. I'd get hammered all weekend, yeah. and it was time. To, it was time to clock back into the show on Monday, and I say messed up. In that in that time was when we started trying to get, you know, sober. But I actually relapsed in the in the shooting of that show, Change or Die, and that's when Dallas intervened and said, "Look, man, either go to go to Black Bear, you know, go to Black Bear Recovery, or I'm out of your life. Your niece is out of your life." We're all out of your life, and you know, or you can, you know, you or you can go get sober. I watched all that through that. I was, I was, I was feeling the pain with you, brother. I watched all of yeah. that. Whoa, it was rough. Hey, trust me, I know. Um, not taken away, but I see. That's why this is a sobriety show. I myself struggled with drinking terribly. Like you see, how he said, "Fix it." That's what it is. Like anytime, I don't know what happened. I it, when I was young. I used to do everything, you know what I mean? Because I was wild, I was out there, I used to do music, I used to wrestle, I used to do all kinds of crazy stuff. This isn't about me, but that. I was out there doing all kinds of crazy stuff. So just like he said, you, you take things to get up, you take things to lay down, you take things to act normal, you take things to act crazy, you take things yes. to have fun, you take things, you just take things after a while. After a while, yes. it's like you're just taking all kinds of shit, and where right. are you? You lose yourself. You lose yourself. Yes, and then you I thought I was doing well. Listen now, because a lot of us do this too. You're fixing a problem, but replace it with another one. I was doing well. I calmed down because, see, then I got married. I had kids. You know, you can't you can't be crazy on drugs. You can't sell drugs. You can't do all that crazy stuff because that's wrong. Because you know, she had we had four daughters. A man's not supposed to have drugs around that, right? So then, right. instead of the drugs, right? Listen now, Buff. You know, you you take these drugs. I pushed them to the side, right? And then I, I'm only gonna smoke weed and drink. Mm, that's it. That's drinking's all. okay. That's it. Drinking's fine. Drinking's fine. I'm gonna tell you guys. It's right legal. Now, it's legal. What's wrong with drinking? So then it's. Oh man, drinking's even scarier, guys. Okay, in a way, because then it was—it's acceptable. It's acceptable to show up a little drunk, because hey, yeah. at least at least he's not doing what he used to do. You know, right. Ooh, that's even better, because now your family's okay with it, because drink is not a problem oh, yeah. yet. And then it becomes. Well, I remember, sure, I remember my mom took me to the doctor at early, uh, probably around early twenties, uh, twenty-five, and I was taking sixty. And this is not a war. Oh, yeah, I'm not trying to, yeah, no, no, no. I've heard it. Yeah, you're right. 60 pills a day, bro. 60 and, pills a day. And, and swallow it with a case of beer. And the doctor goes, Miss Bagwell, the beer's going to kill him way before the pills do. And I'm in the background going, yes, right? Oh, my gosh. I just still keep taking my pills. Yep. But really, I didn't know it because I got six lifetime DUIs and none of them are alcohol. They're all prescription pills. So I really never was an alcoholic. I was I was a I was a drug addict. I was a pill head. Gotcha. And and pill the alcohol just kicked it in. But but when that happened, my, and I was I, that's the first time I learned that alcohol was bad. Yep. And it still wasn't to me it wasn't bad. Not was, a big deal. Then, yeah, because you start looking at it and it's on every corner, bro. Prescription pills, you gotta wait every thirty days to get the refill. There's some kind of law on it. There's alcohol everywhere, everywhere you go, brother. So it was an easy drug to go to. And that's why and, and AA or anything else you do, you don't say you don't say, you know, I, I'm an alcohol I don't say I'm an alcoholic. I say I'm an addict because that's what I am. I was an addict and um and I'm a recovering addict. Um, and you, you don't you don't you don't finish the 12 steps you work the 12 steps you don't you don't you don't become a recovered alcoholic you're never you're cured recovering. yeah you're never no. cured because it only takes you're one recovering it only takes one i used to lie and think oh man yeah. uh, i could just have one sometimes no yeah. because when i had i don't know what what was that thing you used to call it what you said it what was it called hold on i have it written down it used to be called something the um 
the cross addiction or no allergic effect. That's what it was. The allergic yeah. effect. If yes. I if I had one, it's not just one because there's not just one. One is yes. a million, and the next thing I you know, happen. the next yeah. day I, you can't remember what happened. Wow. Yeah, yeah. you blacked out again. You're like, How did I do this again? Again. So again. so 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 my 19 months started with Dallas coming to me and saying, "Try to get clean." And, and I went in the first day going, "These guys, I'm gonna try it for these guys. For these guys. For these guys." I, yeah, I'm not going. I'm not going to get sober. So there's way. still I'm nothing wrong with me. There's nothing wrong. No, there's nothing wrong. And then when you get up there and you start trying to see, you start to clear mind thinking. But the real work starts when you get out of that first 30 day rehab. You get out of that 30 day and you say, "All right, now now the test starts right now." When you get over the other side of the wall, bro, that's when it starts. And so that and so the aftercare happened. Everything that I used to laugh and joke about is what happened this time. And it was follow, they had to follow somebody that was successful. So aftercare, 120 days sober, 90 meetings in 90 days, get a sponsor. And for me, DUI court happened. Okay. So the DUI court, there was, even if a thought came in my mind like, well, you're good, you can do it still. You can drink a little here if you want to, no. which I haven't and don't want to, but I'm in DUI court for another, for another year. So I'm glad of that DUI court, to be honest with you, because it's it's another thing at an early stage of sobriety. It gets me to know that that's another thing there that's going to help me stay sober. But when all of these things are cut off, when you don't got to go to DUI court, when you don't got to get drug tested, what then? What do you do then? What do you yeah. do then? So it's right a tough now. call. Yeah. Right now he's right at, now you got, you're at, you got things taking care of you and, and watching you, but you know, but when that happens, that's when the big test is going to be. He, I'm sorry, I wasn't trying to interrupt you. I just wanted them to know. Right now, my boy is at 582 days sober off of everything. That's been everything. Since, everything, y'all. Everything, like everything. No drink. No somas. No, no Xanax. No no painkillers. No muscle relaxers. Not nothing. 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 Not a hit. Not a hit of a joint. Oh I man! Mean, not even a hit crazy. of a joint. That's crazy to think. Wrap your head around that, brother. I've had several friends that really know me. Mm -hmm. They believe my walk, mm -hmm. but they've got me to the side and gone. I mean, come on, man. Not even a I mean, joint. Really, you ever had one joint or a beer or nothing? I said, brother, nothing. And they're like, oh, wow. That's amazing. It's a I, long time, brother. I have nowhere near time as you. I had a, I don't know if they would call it a rehab. I used to be a Hellraiser, right? So what I had was the past caught up. Boom, something from years ago caught up. And that, you know, I don't want to get into the whole story. But bounty hunters came to my house, bro. Came to my house, wow. found me when I was in the toilet. I couldn't make this shit up. I had, I, I, for some, some reason, something in my mind told me right before I went to the restroom, I wanted to change my pajamas, right? Dude, I had a Where's Waldo t-shirt on. This cat behind me can verify it. I had a Where's yeah. Waldo t-shirt on that said, here I am. And when I came out of the restroom, they had the lights on me. Like, there he is! Took me to jail. Had me in jail for 34 days. We all, it was some assault stuff, you know, things happen. Um, of course. Of course. Um, so I was there for 30 days, 34 days. No drinks, no nothing, right? So it was like a forced rehab in a way. But because yeah. nothing, nothing, was gonna, nothing was going to, nothing was going to change it. So I got out and... I don't know. Every, that's what changed it. I want it to change. Um, but you that's when it. your real test starts, though. That's like he's saying. Yeah. That's when your feet go to the and fire. I'm not going to say I have been 100% perfect since then. I've had, I think we had, what, we drank. I had a shot with them on New Year's because, I don't know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, I'm recovering, right? You're an addict. <laughs> right? I'm an addict. I'm recovering. And I think we had an, another one since then. I can't remember. But I don't drink, Right. I don't drink, but I'm recovering. That's a part of why I reached out to you. And it's so amazing that you are on your journey because yeah. it takes someone that you can relate to or someone you respect. It takes, I don't know what it takes, guys. I can't tell you I know what it takes, but I know I do. he does. And that's why it helps me because let, I, tell us, what does it take? Let me tell you what it is. Let me tell you what it is. You've got to find, you've got to find something to put in the place 
that that hole that liquor pours into and soma pulls into all those things you pull that hole into in your chest you gotta find something to fill it if you don't find something to fill it you are not going to stay sober you have got to fill that that area that void i filled it Got and you. I think the number is three things. The three things that I filled my body with that got Marcus Buff Bagel sober is number one, and hear me. Yes. Number one is God. Yes. You got to put him one or you're already doing it wrong. That's true. Number two, I put my body and, 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 and what goes on, my health, my body, my livelihood. And three is my girlfriend. I think it's three things. If that three is... God, golf, and and ballet, then this God, golf, and ballet. But God's got to be number one, no matter how many people that want to have an upper, I mean, the, you know, the higher, the higher power be the chair and the kitty cat. Yeah, they, they say that, higher that power. Shit don't work. Your higher power is God. Yes. And when that higher power is God, you've got a chance to make it. But after you get those three things, that you put in place of that drink, mm -hmm. then it's about following. You get into AA, you get into uh, the program, you get inside those walls, and I call that my medication. Okay. If you have cancer yeah. and you're taking chemotherapy for that cancer, when you take the chemotherapy, you stay alive. If you stop taking your chemotherapy, you die. You die. Yeah. My chemotherapy is the rooms of AA and, um, and, and and I have it a sponsor and the DUI court. It's the tools. The tools I use is the medication I take on a daily basis to stay sober. That is wise. Wow. See, it takes something like that for me. So I don't know. See, that's what this show's about. Because you guys, if you, you obviously, if you're watching this, it's because you love wrestling. It's because you love Buff Bagwell. So, like, the same thing, right? I can listen to this cat because I'm hard-headed, right? I'm a hard-headed son of a bitch. But I can listen to someone that I've respected and loved my whole life. And now this motherfucker is my friend and cares about me. So I yes. can listen and pow! That's something yes. powerful. That's what this show yes. is, y'all. Absolutely. That's Boom. amazing, right? Okay. Tell let's, me. Let's, let's get it's crazy, more. man. Uh, this Again, though, man, well, you know, I find it so hard to try to tell people how how great it is to be sober. I know there's so many people out there that are lost, and they don't know that first step to take. I mean, yeah. I, wasn't, I wasn't quite sure. It just, you just got to, I have yet, I have yet met anyone that, Fully did the start of trying to stay sober. They didn't see their life a thousand times better, uh, uh, and and that's that's the that's the beauty of it is it, it don't happen right away. No. It ain't like you say a prayer and it didn't Magic. come through the next morning. And you say a prayer and it didn't come through the next morning, so you don't believe in God again. It don't work like that. You got to put some time in, brother. But when you put time in. You see that it pays off, and for the 20 months I put in, it, it really has, it's unbelievably paid off to the point where I, I can't even imagine doing what I did before. I mean, I did it, and it made sense, and I rewarded myself, and all the, all the tricks you tell yourself and you tell your brain, but the truth is, you know, I would have made it longer, bigger, and better if I'd have been drug-free. That's true. That is that is true. Um, yes. That that probably. I mean, from what they say. I mean, I don't know. I wasn't there. But obviously, drugs played a part in why you didn't get to hang out as long as you should have. But you know what's great though? I, I remember. I remember. I remember. I remember being in, with Big Show at mm -hmm. WWF. Okay. WWF. Okay. Not WWE. WWF for you old timers. Yeah. And I, I was around, and all my boys. Nobody's taking pills. And all my boys, nobody's drinking. Okay. I pulled Paul White to the side and I said, brother, what, what is going on? What What's going on? He goes, come here. And I go, what? We go, she goes, get in the bathroom stall and sit down. I'm like, what? So I go in the bathroom stall. I sit down on the toilet 
and a beer and two somas come across to me. <laughs> so they would go in the stall. They go sit down acting like they're taking a shit. And then yeah. drugs and alcohol comes right in. Yes. Magic. Magic. The so, magic fairies. Again, I, thought, oh, I knew these boys wasn't staying sober. So, yeah. you know, and that's, and I made that make sense to me, you know, and it just, it we wasn't a did. bad thing. Everybody just, we needed some stuff. And those guys were able to control it. I was not, I wasn't able to control it. So mine got worse and worse till I got in trouble. It happens. Hey, that's. Trust me, I know, brother. I, I, yeah. I, I'm just not under the magnifying glass that you are, so nobody knows about my fuck-ups. But who knows? <laughs> I might end up famous hanging out with you, and then all of y'all yeah. find out all my dirt and fucking hate me after that. But hey, I'm human, just like you, okay? Yeah. If you're like, come yes. on, give me a break. This is awesome. All right, so what else? Oh, my God. Um, I was watching you when you were going through it. So I saw some of your interviews, obviously. So I guess we'll talk about some of those things because that's part of the journey as well. You said sure. when you first were in the in wrestling, like you weren't, you know, obviously when you were a kid, I don't know, Slick Johnson said that your dad used to bring y'all Coke before y'all went out and partied, right? Is that true? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay, tell that. Go ahead, tell that. Well, Everybody yeah, saw it on Vice. Well, again, kind of like my mom holding my junk, shaving. There's always a little, 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 little extra, little, little extra on the extra. stuff. That the the true story behind the shaving was my um, was I, I my neck was broken. I was home with a broke neck, and I had a C collar on. So you can't look down to shave your legs when your C collar's on your neck. Mm -hmm. So my legs were getting hairy, and I'm was very anal about my body. I was still able to do legs in the gym with my broke neck. Mm -hmm. So the truth is, and he left this part out, my wife was shaving one leg and my mother was shaving the other. And neither one of those bitches were going to be shaving my balls. <laughs> That's too dangerous. You nick something. That's the end. That's the yeah, end. you got to hold your own junk, you know? You got to hold your junk. All right. Yeah. All right. So, but, 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 it, but it sounded good. I liked it. It's hey, a good story. It's know? vice. It's, it, it's good. It's good. It's juicy. Yeah. Um, oh, here we go. So yeah, the old man, the old, old man, man used to bring y'all. He used to bring y'all bags of coke. Is that it? Just they acted like they just bring you piles of cocaine. Daddy bag will always like, bring you it was piles. A little, every and Debbie gave us a little bit each. You know, it's a little bag. Well, you know, yeah, wasn't it wasn't like a ounces or anything, but it was a a little bag of of coke for all of us. You know, but we come home during that time. My parents were going broke. Ooh. Is what happened okay. um, during that time. A lot of pressure was happening with my old man and my mom because the, the, the lumber business was going out of business. And so when I, I was partying as a kid. I was still going to high school playing football and baseball, but I was partying with my dad as well. So he would come up before the weekend. And we went out and he'd pass out the Coke and we'd, we'd go, we'd go party, you know, okay. and we come home and he, you know, he sold the story about shooting the gun. Uh, I mean, you know, the, he emptied the, 40 oh, shot clip next day we had to make sure the geese wasn't dead i saw that yeah. do you still are you, so are you and slick still like buddies y'all are still buddies right? okay 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 oh yeah okay because okay. okay. y'all been like friends since kids right oh yeah very cool. well, not as young as you think i'm like 16 yeah like okay. i remember mark johnson i was in a room i was my i was in my homeroom class oh, i'm sorry Slick Johnson, I'm sitting here talking like everybody knows. Referee Mark Slick Johnson is a referee yeah. from WCW back in the day. He was around forever. I think he also refereed at TNA. Does he still wrestle forever. anywhere? Is he still refereeing? now? He was a ball-headed, good-looking ball referee. The best-looking referee. The best-looking yeah. referee. The hand, the pull most, him up. Pull him up. Pull him up, Mark. We're yeah. going to pull him up. We're going to show y'all Slick. Slick's the shit. I love Slick. He's one of my favorites. He's up there with like... Yeah, he's great. Like, he but he he was Mark Johnson was my roommate mm. um, growing up, and then, I mean not growing up as a sixteen year. I mean as when I got when I Teenager. got married, yeah, I got divorced at twenty one, and I moved in four of my best friends and to my house, and he was one of the four. That's cool. And from that point on, brother, he was with me twenty four seven, and everything that could happen, bad and not even bad, all good and fun happened underneath that house and we had a blast doing it all. That's, that's cool. That's cool. All right. You um, said 
What? You pulling up slick for us? What are you doing? I, I don't know. Is he bald? Yeah, he's bald. Yeah. He's the most he's beautiful. He's the he's the sexiest I think I bald. Found he's found the, him. the second sexiest bald man behind no, myself. Here. Pull him up. Pull him up. Let's show him to the let's show him to the people. It took a second. They gave me uh, some manager from back in the day. Is that him? Yeah, it is, Slick. That's, him. That's my boy. Look at that bald headed son of a bitch. Look at him. Beautiful. That's right. That's the second. I think that's a TNA. Man ever. That Looks is, like that's, that's a TNA yeah, logo that's behind yeah, his that's head. T, that's when he's at TNA. I can tell just because that's how he had his chin at that time. How how he got hired, bro? He tell was us. living with me. He lived with me and didn't have a pot to piss in. Oh. And me, Eric Bischoff pulls me and Scott Steiner in the in the room in Atlanta, Georgia, and he goes, "Hey, man, we need we need um, we need an MWO referee." And me and Scott Steiner look at each other like, oh, my oh God. Oh, my God. Mark. I go, Mark Johnson was the most animated, funny person on the face of the planet. Oh. And, I, and he, he'd never watched a wrestling match in his life. Really? But I just told him what the rules were. And he became, I think, one of the best referees in the history of time. He is. He's one, but, of, the, he's one of the greatest refs ever. He really is. He really he, is. He didn't watch it. He didn't know the rules. Wow, really? I had done to, to to the five count over the top rope. Wow. I had to give him all the rules to let him learn. Yeah. And he, come, he comes in as Buff's boy, of course, and the referees were making 75 grand a year, and he come in making 100 with all the heat. Wow. So that's why they started calling him Slick. <laughs> yeah, Slick Johnson. Oh, Slick Johnson. Yeah. All right, they say, all right, so obviously you were having fun as a teenager. But then also, I guess when you first got in the biz, the way I guess you first started doing drugs with guys is like Sting gave you drugs. Sting? No, no, okay, no. Sting, okay, Sting okay. Because he was—he's a clean guy, right? Me and me and Lex were horrible to Sting. Okay, we, but 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 he—he he was only—he didn't—he just dibble dabbled a little early. Okay, and I never did it with him ever. Sting was. Sting's Sting's journey, brother, was on, was about God real quick. Always, yeah. Right. Okay, okay. He turned he turned it around really quick, and 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 me and Lex thought we were okay, of course, of course, you know. But of course, we we wasn't fully okay. But we just you know we just um we learned later. But at the same time, Sting was always he was always immature. You know, he was Sting, brother. Dude. He was Sting. Yeah, he was. He was, he was he was he was the bomb. But That's cool. but yeah um. But early on, it was just in every it was in every locker room. Somas were in every wrestler's bag, so it was just a no brainer. It was really a, a a very addictive pill because oh I know with somas you could take it, you could eat, you pass out, you, you wake fine. up, and you could do it, and you could do it again. Yep. So every single night on the road. We would do somas and alcohol every single night, and it just because it didn't affect us. We we I told myself it's the lie. It's the story you tell yourself. Yep. I told myself the story we tell I ourselves. Worked, I worked out today. I I did cardio today. I deserve I this. tanned and I'm in shape. I look good. I paid my bills today. I rewarded myself and made it make sense. Yep. That's what we tell ourselves. That's true. Cause yes. this is I earned this. I, I I I went to work. I I handled all the biz. The lights are on. We're sitting here watching yes. cable. Nothing's wrong. My, so why okay, can't I do this? Why yeah. can't I do this? Right. My oh, my man. mother went to my father and said hey, we got to tell we got to do something with him. And my, my dad said, looked at my mom. He goes, "What's wrong?" No, he goes, "Mom." He goes, "Look at his house. It's perfect." He's in shape. His both his cars and his motorcycles have up to date oil changes. There's not, a, there's, not a, a, there's not a piece of furniture out of place. He goes, and we work for him. What's what wrong with him? Yeah, what do you want me to tell this what, guy? What's wrong with him? What am I supposed to say? Yeah, there's so yes nobody can say him. anything. Yeah. Finally, WWF goes away. DUI started happening, and they tried to tell me, but it was too late. And then there went 20 years. 20 years. That's crazy. 20 years, brother. Hey. Yes, it, it happens that way. I didn't lose as it's, much as you because I'm not, I'm not, I, well, I don't have as much as you to lose for one thing. And I'm not, <laughs> and I'm not, I'm not quite up there in age yet. 
But I, it's it's crazy when you think about it. I would imagine it was yes. about six to eight years. This like, you don't even know it when you're going through it. This is me being for real with y'all. You don't even know it when you're going through it until you. It's like, it's like you fucking come out of that fog somehow, and then you're like, holy shit, I just to say eight to you, years. To, say to, you, to say to you guys, it was twenty years. It really, it was more like. 23 or 24 but but really to know that somehow or another every single day of my life had pills and alcohol in it for over 20 years brother that's, that's, crazy, that's crazy to me that is crazy it's right? nuts. but it did and it had my life surrounded i mean it was just all it was a four it was it was about bodybuilding, pills, and alcohol. And whatever else came with that, it came. But that's all that mattered was, you know, and then, of course, you quit going to the gym. You quit tanning. You quit wrestling. It just, it's coming. And then all it's you coming. have is like, the drugs and alcohol after that. Whew. Yes. Uh, it was yeah, rough. It goes right. quick. It was, it was rough it watching It goes that. fast. But look at you now. That's Look at this. Yeah, Risen from the ashes. Look at yes. this like motherfucker. Great, what a, what a, a great, great day Phoenix. To, to, to be doing this on the Jesus' day, Resurrection bro. day. Couldn't Three have planned days. it even better. We didn't plan this, y'all. He he had things to do last week. I was I, sh I tried to show y'all a replay, but something went wrong with it, so you couldn't see it. So you might have been like, where are you guys at? Where are you guys at? See, we didn't plan this. He, You know, he's got no. big boy shit going on. So, you know, sometimes... He's 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 back in the biz, y'all. So like sometimes we yes. might have to do something here and there. We're not saying that the show's not gonna be every Sunday because it is, but sometimes it won't be. Okay, that's what we'll say because yes. he might have obligations. You never know. But we didn't plan this, just like we didn't plan nothing else before. But here it is, coincidentally, the resurrection of Jesus. We're gonna talk about the resurrection of wrestling Jesus right here, man. Yes, absolutely. What a great day to celebrate this on. I mean, we, we went to church today, and, um, you know, East, Easter Sunday is kind of like New Year's Eve. I mean, like New Year's Day in, in gyms. Everybody signs up for the new year, and everybody's going to go for the year. Do it all so year. Easter's kind of the same way. It's like, oh, well, we'll go to church on, on Jesus' you know, resurrection day, but what about that other 365 days, you know? So, yeah, so all the new timers, all the newcomers are there today, and it's a good day to go to, to church. I love, I would never miss Easter, but it is it is a big day, man. It's the day that he died for all of us, and it just, it's a, it's a big thing to me, and um, my walk with, you know, with with, with Jesus is, is I, I parallel them with the walk of recovery. It's it's because one don't go without the other. It just... Even in AA, there's a lot of people that fight it. But the truth is, until you have that connection with God, you're not truly going to get sober. That's true. I, I would imagine so. Because, I mean, that's... It's not it's not it's a Nothing is it's possible. A it's a that's cool, man. Nothing's positive. Yeah. Without, I mean, nothing's possible without Jesus, right? No, it's not, brother. It's not. It's first. It's right. first. So Dale Wil Dale Wilkes and Sting, I got a story on him right there quick. There we go. go. Dale, Dale Wilkes, one of my best friends of all time. Um, I'll never forget this one day. He, you know, this this is something that I would ask him about talking about because he wouldn't let me. But you know, with him passed away and gone, you know, I'm, I miss Dale a lot because he was a great piece of my life and was one of my best tag team partners. Of course, we won the belts twice. twice. Not to interrupt, we talked about Dell on the first episode. He was the Patriot. He was Stars and Stripes with Buff Bagwell. Yes. Just, yes. All right. I just wanted to recap so they know, just in case y'all didn't see the last episode. Sure. Just in case you don't sure. know. He is but this guy right he, here. Yeah, here he is. That guy right there. And so, look at this young motherfucker back there, bro. Oh, my God. Baby Buff. Oh, man. There he is. All right. But, yeah, that's him. Who is that? That's, that's Stevie Ray. That's that Booker T. He's got somebody's, he's got somebody's arm Booker messed T. up. Look at him. That's Dale Wilkes right there, you guys. That's him without the mask. That's the Patriot. Buff tried to hook his pants up, but Dale wanted to wear the old school drawers over the pants anyways. Yes. That's but deal. he's the first guy to give me somas. Yeah? 
Well, he was probably wrestling. And he called me, and he called me and apologized for it. Ten, about 15 years later, he called me and apologized for it. Wow. And and, and again, I don't blame. I would never blame Del with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were having but fun. But it's fun. It's weird how like how that happens in life. And you know, and he and he, you know, he, he was always in Cleveland, and it was snowing. And he gave me three somas, and I didn't know it. I, I thought I was taking Advil. You were driving. And I'm going right? down the road, and I'm like. Huh? You were driving, right? They had you driving. Yeah, I was yeah, driving. I know this story. Storm. And I was like, oh, my God. And they, 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 they said, pull over. You're going to kill us. Pull over. And 20 years, well, not that long, probably 15 years later, in the, in the start of my addiction with making headlines, he called me and apologized one day. He goes, man, I want to say I'm sorry. I go, for what? He goes, for giving you your first Soma. I go, Dale, come on, bro. He loved you. Oh, bro, no. But what a, that's what kind of yeah, heart he, he had. loved he you. Yeah. A, he loved He was you. such a great guy. We loved each other so much. I love I love Del, Delbert Wilkes. Delbert Wilkes, y'all. Delbert from South Carolina. That's where I'm from, y'all. Woo-hoo. Columbia. Yeah, that's right. That's badass. All right, next. On to the next. Um did Here's a here's here's a rough one to go through, but I'm still going to ask you. Did how did how did your mother's death? How did Judy's death affect you with your with your addiction? How'd that how'd that how'd that go? Because I know, I know those of you who don't know Judy Bagwell, big part of Buff's career, big part of his life. He had, I had a shit mom, but he had like the one of the world's greatest moms ever. We just behind the scenes, we saw her on TV, but if you also saw the Vice story, you got to hear more things. I've followed his career forever, so I got, I've heard so many things about her. But he legit had an amazing mom, strongest woman in the world. She passed away from Alzheimer's, so he had to watch her go from a solid rock and wither rough. Yes. How did that how did that affect you? Believe it or not, I think it was a and my father even said this on the Vice show, but I really believe it was maybe more of a plus. Okay. Um, around that time was when I was really dabbling with wanting to get sober. That was, you know, right after my mom died was it was Dallas's show, Change or Die. So I was dabbling with wanting to get clean, trying to get clean, trying to kick its butt again, trying to. Trying to. And, and so her death didn't make it any worse. It just, I think it did, nothing else, it did better. It made me not want to be screwed up anymore. Not you want to be you to honor her. Like a way yeah, to kind of honor her kind of thing. But awesome. I, you know, with that, with that horrible addiction, with that horrible medical illness of, of um, Alzheimer's and um, dementia, it's, you know, kids, me being the kid, sees things that they're not supposed to see, brother. I mean, I'm changing my mom's diaper, man, and it just, it's awful. It's so horrible. I i am a true believer in Jesus Christ. And I had, even laying on my back, paralyzed in the ring, you heard me not say to God, why? That's true. I, I never, I never said why. I believe nobody should ask why. But if there was a chance, that I had one chance to ask God why about one thing, not about kids that may be mentally ill or retarded, not like that. I wouldn't, uh, cancer, not so much. It would be about dementia, bro. Dementia is the only thing I could look at God's eyes and say, what's that for? Yeah. What's that for? What, what is that for? Because it did something to my mama. She landed a 747 airplane in her living room in a hospital bed one day. She did all the buttons and was landing a 747, bro. Wow. I've never seen nothing like it. She she had the words for the brakes and the lights and the switches. And she's wow. flipping switches. She, knew she, she and, didn't even know. No, she didn't know. And I'm watching her land... A 747, except she was in a oh, hospital bed. bed. Wow. And it went from that to us. It was kind of funny and, and laughing, kind of. Yeah. But as it progressed, it was the most vicious, life-sucking disease wow. I've ever seen in my It took a woman that ran a 250 men employee 
12 million dollar a year industry into the ground brother i mean this was a powerhouse of a woman that was i mean at the bottom of the barrel when she died i would ask god why about dementia Oof. Was, it was rough i bet to say the least so, huh? this, it, it, she was one of those deaths that it was one of those for sure that you said hey she's better off okay she she is much thank away. you i don't know yeah, i was not sad you. i was not sad at all when my mother died i was thankful yeah. i i thank god it was time for her to go rest she had she was fighting and she was fighting a losing battle brother Oof. so she it was time to go glad she went i had a very special 20 minute session with her before she died shaving her face you know, my mom was you know 70 77 78 so she had a couple of hairs on her chin hey, it's all right that, 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 that I, I said give me some shaving cream and a, and a razor and i said why would you let my mom get like yeah this? we could see her. what's wrong with y'all we couldn't we couldn't see her because of covid so when i got to see her i shaved her and she died the next day hey at least you had that right absolutely you're, you're, you're a, a good son thing. look at that cleaned her up yeah, real no quick problem. good boy Get a clean real right. quick. I love it. I love it, man. This is good. Um, I want to take a minute out. I want to ask you a question. This is something I want to know because I there's there's questions that we're gonna read on here because you got we got people here today. They're all checking it out. They got questions. Wow, we got people watching. Well, fans this here. is awesome. We got the fans here to love buff. Look at that. That's pretty cool. Um, this is something I want to know. Um, you were on. Uh, How's your relationship with, with the Hannibal TV guy? You know, I I, I, mean, I have to dig to find that. I know it's bad, yeah. and I know that I have a really bad thought of him instantly. Good. But I don't really know what it was over. I think it was like jibber-jabber from all. Okay. Can I do it? Can I but do I don't it? know. Can I do yeah, it? Yeah, please. Cool. Yeah. Fuck Hannibal TV, okay? Because I saw your interview on there. <laughs> that You had a couple of them, okay? Fuck you. I want to go. You, that's when you were struggling through your shit at some of the hardest point right there, okay? And me as a person that loves you, that shit was hard to fucking watch. And this guy, I'm pretty sure he gets all kinds of clicks and views and all kinds of shit because you're famous and he's fucking not, okay? So right. this guy, he made you look silly on there, right? Because you, you were struggling. He was catching you and all kind of little things. I just wanted to take the time out because look at my boy now, 500 and fucking 82 days sober. He's not going to be petty and mean. I fucking will, okay? 582 days sober, you whack piece of shit. I hope nobody ever watches your shit again. Fuck you. You don't take wrestlers and nice guys. Their lives are fucked up because they get hurt for money to entertain you, you piece of shit. You wouldn't have a show without wrestlers, you piece of shit. You see the passion? I mean this shit. You took these guys, and this is one of my favorite motherfuckers. You take them, and you try to make some fucking money off of their pain? Fuck you. All right, I'm done. Sorry. But I'm serious. All right. Yes. If I see you somewhere... That's it for you, motherfucker. I'm going to whoop your ass. I already know Too Cold said he's going to kick my ass because of what I said on the last episode. Well, fuck you too, fat boy. You probably can whoop me. I'm not big. But fuck you too, fat boy. Get your shit fixed. You stutter too much when you talk. But you, Hannibal, I know I can whoop your ass all day, all night. So when I see you, motherfucker, I might see you at Comic-Con or fucking, what would you be at? Fucking Baby Con or fucking Get My Ass Whoop Con. Some shit like that con. Man, con, hand a fucking hand job, con. Where would the fuck you at? I'll be there sooner or later, motherfucker, and I'm gonna smash your shit in for him and all other wrestlers you fucked over. Anyways, all right, let's get back on the good shit. My boy is risen from the fucking ashes like a great phoenix. Is there anything else? Because we're getting close to the end. Is there anything else that you would like to tell people or say before we start taking questions and let the fans talk to you a little bit? Because we're going to do this again next week, y'all. But we'll get into that Every part week. at the end. Every week. Because we're the Buff and Stuff Podcast. I don't know how I did this shit. This is my friend, y'all. Like, legit. This is my fucking talk. This is my fucking friend now. I went from watching to now this is my boy. 
All right. Is there anything you want to say about sobriety, or, or is there anything you want to promote, or or is there like just anything in particular you want to say about your journey or anybody else's journey or anything? Because I already talked shit about Hannibal. Fuck you, Hannibal. Yeah. You, Hannibal. Just uh, just make sure that if you have somebody that's in, that's in trouble, somebody that needs help, you know, reach out to me, man. My my web my email address is marcusbuffbattle at gmail. You know, reach out to me and I'll I'll try to throw some help your way. I mean. You know, this thing is a, you got to be ready to do it. You can't go to somebody and want them to get sober. They got to be ready. But if you know somebody that is struggling, that wants to get help, my email address again is marcusbuckbagel at gmail and contact me and I'll, I'll try to hit you the right people, man. I, I know a lot of people in this thing and, and I've done well to stay sober and I did it by following. So follow somebody that is successful at it and you'll find yourself being sober as well. That's what but I'm doing. Let's, let's take some questions. I'm following this guy all the way to the promised you land. I oh, trust me, yeah. I am motherfucker. I am. I can say hey, I can tell from the conversations you actually are my. He's he's the most charming, genuine. I'm mm -hmm. I'm gonna suck your dick for a minute. Charming, genuine, like good-hearted, real dude. He's not some fucking TV star. This motherfucker. <laughs> he's a good old Georgia boy. Okay. He's 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 he's, he's like. Dude, his ex-wives still love him. I bet you they'd still just, if he wanted, they and they love his girlfriend. I heard that shit, too. They love, like, they, like, what bitches do that? What bitches like, oh, man, I love my ex. I even love the girl that's with him right now. I love him. He's a he's he's a good boy. He's a nice guy. I'm a good boy. Yeah, you're a good that's boy. One thing, that's one thing that I'm glad came out of his vice also is it shows that I am a good person, man. You, you don't You don't divorce two women that were very special in your life and them both still love you because it's because I'm a good guy. You know, I mean, Tanya and Judy both are fantastic women, but they still love me because I'm a good guy, man, you know? So I'm glad they do. And I love them too. It's just, uh, it's a, it's a, it's a tough world period. It and it's, you know, the, the good stuff. I, I, the other day, a guy wanted an action figure and he called me up and he texted me and he goes, I mean, he emailed me. He goes, how do I know this is the real buff? And I said, FaceTime me. Oof. How many dudes you know do that? Nobody. So the dude FaceTimes me. He gets on the phone. And he goes, oh, my God. You, you're you buff back? I go, yes. That's what I, I did. Talked to him for 20 minutes. I talked to him for 20 minutes, sign an action figure for him, and mail it to him. That's what I People did. don't do that. Bro. No, they People don't. People don't do that. They don't. They don't. Dude. I do He does. He does. You can talk to this motherfucker if y'all really wanted to. I mean, shit, that's how I talk to him. I don't know what the exactly. fuck I was thinking. I was like, hey, man, I'm going to fucking reach out to Buff Bagwell. And then, like, yeah, he's, he's, he's so accessible, and he fucking hit me up. And now, look, we gotta, we're got we best fucking friends, and we got a fucking TV show. Bow. Yes, <laughs> Let's take some questions. Let's take some questions. All right, Mark, that's your job. The Mark, read off some questions. Let's get y'all's questions in there. Ask Buff right, some shit. Up. He's here. Scroll up, check it we out. We got a few from, uh, from the beginning. We got a net from Australia. We got Powers in here calling you the go, of course. We, we got, got our boy, boy Backlog, Backlog in here. Yes, sir. My boy Backlog. Happy Easter from everybody. Um, we got our girl Song of the Sea in here. Oh, Alyssa's here. Yep. Supporting. Um, they love they love the way the that Vice handled your documentary. Um, I did too. I did too. What was Bravo scary? And Vice, man. Dark Side did a great job with that. They did. They didn't like do you bad at all. I was so they surprised. They could have fucking yeah. They could have. I got a question here. One from Backlog. Buff, what are your thoughts on the beef between Tony Khan and Eric Bischoff? I don't know about the heat with Tony and Eric. Um, but I can tell you that I, I never met Tony, so I don't know much about this, but I never met Tony, but I can tell you that anything negative that's said about Eric Bischoff, they're going to have to really show me something good because man, Eric Bischoff is the best boss, uh, best brain, best, one of the best men I've ever met in my life as in a boss type position of running a major company, Eric Bischoff is number one. All right, hold on. Tell them the story. Tell them that you, you, we brought up Eric. Tell them the story about you, Eric, at the nightclub when Kevin was trying to get you in the NWO, blah, blah, blah. Can you do that one? Is that cool? 
Uh, well, there's a couple. The one where he, where he was kind of against me. Yeah, 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 yeah. The good one. Okay. But hey, hey, hey. Well, be careful. He said, he we said, can't uh, use the F word. F, F U? No, not that one. Okay. Yeah, the other. Oh. Yeah, the F A. We don't. We can't use that one. Oh. Yeah, don't use oh, that yeah. one. Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We can't. No, we cannot. We can't. We cannot that one. Oh, not that. Wow. We can curse. Okay, we can okay, say well, fuck. We can say anything. But Twitch is new. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Okay, yeah, so yeah, yeah. We're, we're in a club, and Bishop didn't really know me very well, and he's like, um, he goes, "Wow," he goes, uh, and, "and everybody, all the boys were they liked me and were accept, accepting me in." And Eric said, "Well, I don't see no girls around you, brother." And I said, "What?" And I go, <laughs> hey, so I said. I am the pussy getting this no pussy around me right now person you ever met in your life. <laughs> Brother. And this is the boss. This is my boss. I said this to and all the boys went like, what are you, just as Eric Bischoff? And, and he went, I like you, bad boy. <laughs> and then y'all became buddies, right? That is so cool. Yes. I mean, all that right. dude, this is a boss that flew our Harleys to where we were going to meet and we get on our Harleys and ride. And he had a, and it would fly our Harleys back home. I mean, he was the best boss on the planet. Here's one from Cliff the Pig. It says, I don't hear a lot about Scott Steiner. You guys were hilarious with each other and in a great way. It was cool seeing him alongside you. Does he make any appearances? Or I guess they're saying, is he? I don't know. I guess they're asking if he's going to make appearances on any of our broadcasts. I don't fucking know, but go ahead. Maybe we'll reach out to him and see. You know, Scotty's kind of quiet with podcasts and stuff. He I heard he's mean. I heard he's mean. Is Scott Steiner mean? You know, me and Scotty got along really well, but Scotty's got a mean side to him. You know, I mean, I just saw his boy yesterday at LA Fitness. I trained at LA Fitness Woodstock, and I saw his boy uh, Brock. He's got a son named Brock. Oh, and, I thought uh, you meant Lesnar. I was like, holy shit. No, six <laughs> two. 6'2", which, you know, me and Scotty ain't very tall. Mm -hmm. This his, his son's 6'2", and it's yoked, bro. I mean, he looks incredible. Great body on him. Athlete. He wants to wrestle also. Bronson is his first cousin. Their oh, first cousin. wow. Okay. So Bronson's, Bronson's Rick's son. Okay. And Scotty's son is Brock. So they got Brock, Bronson. Uh, they got Maverick. Oh, Maverick. All kind of bad -ass boy names. Oh, wow. <laughs> Maverick Steiner. Oh, well, I guess, well, Rock Steiner, whatever their last name really is. Yeah. That's cool. Um, That's great. Can I ask a question? I'll read another yeah. one of theirs, but I like questions, too, because obviously I'm a fucking fanboy. Are you... Are you gonna? Are you thinking about wrestling them anymore? Are you coming back? Absolutely, you're coming back. I got another. I am thinking about doing oh. it, but it's all for how my surgery goes. Uh -huh. I've got another knee after this foot surgery. I've got another knee surgery to fix um, your. Um, it's 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 like my kneecap, but it's um. Oh God, I can't even the, the word. The patella thing. But my my leg don't extend. My ex extensor mechanism. Okay. My extensor, if you look up your extensor, your knee extensor mechanism, that makes your knee do like a leg, like a leg, like a extension. My leg don't extend. It, it's like, it's like dead, like a limp leg. Uh oh, he's going to limp. It ain't his third leg though, ladies. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If you extend it, I get that fixed in, in the summer. And so, I can. I'll either be wrestling, and nine months I will never wrestle again. So within nine months, I will know if I'll be in the ring or not. Oh, I'm gonna be his manager, y'all. Fuck that. Watch. I'll convince oh, this motherfucker by then. I'll be yelling and screaming, getting my head smashed in. Oh, yes. oh my god. I'll be there no matter what. I can't wait. Oh, that is so cool. Yes. Hold on. Let's read another one. Um, ha, da, 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 da. buff. What was your here? This is by Captain Shifty. What was your favorite match you were in, ever? That's always a toughie, man. Mm. But I, just, I'll, I'll give somebody one. I never give nobody one, but I'll give somebody one. To me, it was Goldberg. We, when, you know, when you beat Goldberg, you've done something. Oh, yeah. And I remember the reason why it was special is because I came up with the finish. Bill Goldberg got beat by Buff Bagwell's Blockbuster. The best and, in the business, uh, by the way. Thank you. And, but what, the way I set it up was... Luger was going to put Goldberg on his shoulders, and I was going to do a blockbuster off the top rope on off of his shoulders. Wow! So when I'm on the top rope waiting, 
And when Lex got underneath Bill and stood up with him, Bill was face to face with me. How do you block? How do you block much of that? Yeah, you can't. So I just live TV, brother. So I just dove over Bill and basically DDT myself in the back. <laughs> oh but wow! It looked, it looked incredible. And and then I we beat Gober. Me and me and Lex did. That's awesome. And we buried him. Buried him, baby. Burned the town. Him a <laughs> Killed him, baby. Buried. Ah, that's cool, man. God. That is so cool. All right, let's happy, do happy Easter, everybody, again, man, for real. Happy Easter. Yes, happy, happy Easter. Happy Resurrection Day. Happy Res. Hey, you're resurrected, my friend. Yes. Yeah. Hey, here's to you. Here's to everyone. <laughs> hey, here's to you. I got a little Coca Cola, okay? Yeah. All right. Woo. Let's see. Uh, is there any more questions? Awesome. Let's see. Is there any more questions? Do you see any, Mark? Um, there, uh, Cliff the Pig would just had his original comment. Said, "Oh, my computer, one second. Mm -hmm. He was just saying that he met you at a comic con last year, and it was really great with his niece and nephew. Oh, and look at that! And uh, Alex Pierce wants to know who you think is going to win the main event at WrestleMania 40: Cody Rhodes or Roman Reigns? Hmm. Man, do you, I, do I you gotta answer you? like this. I gotta answer like this. Um, it should, and I want it to be Cody, mm -hmm. but I think it's going to be Roman Reigns. Why do you think that? I just don't feel it. I, I don't, don't feel it. I don't either. I don't feel it. I think Cody, I think Cody and Seth are going to win the tag match, and then and then, and then then for whatever reason, going to throw the bone there, and then Roman's going to take the belt again. Me and him have been arguing for almost two weeks about what the fuck you're talking about. Because I'm so mad. They need to just finish Cody's story. Let him yes, do it. They're not going Let to. Him, they're, they're not, not going, going to. to. They're fucking not. I told you. See, Will, I fucking told you. They're they're not not they might pull, they might pull some uh, like old school 2000 era stuff no. where they do it at backlash. They're, they trying, do it at backlash. To, they're yeah. trying to dust rock off Ooh, for the hundredth time. Have him come here, kick everyone's ass. I think ass. Rock's going to get the belt. I, I think, think they're going to give the Rock the belt somehow, magically, out of nowhere. I, he's... I, think, I think they should. Yeah, really? <laughs> Oh, yeah. I think the rock. Yeah, the belt. I love the rock. Wrestling, wrestling out of Rock's mouth mm -hmm. to Diamond Dallas Page. I heard the message just two weeks ago. Wrestling's not been this cool in over two decades true. since the NWO. That is true. That is true. And it hasn't been. And it hasn't been this right. cool. When the Rock came back out, everybody it's loves cool it. Cool again. You're right. It's cool again. It's, it's cool going to be cooler when you come back out. Big as shit. Absolutely. I can't wait. I can't wait, bro. I can't wait. Um. Well, I'll, re I'll relate to this one. Uh, this. Certificate Gaming. They said uh, they got they got their first brand new Buff Bagwell figure in 2000, and now their son has it. And yeah, this is from 2000 as well. There it is. I love that. Oh. This is the one that we were talking about where the top hat springs off and it's got the Federation guy. This is yeah. the one. I just don't have the extra stuff because, like I said, uh, I was a little kid. That's okay. <laughs> okay That's all right, bro. You, hey, you got the most important part. Yeah, all right, I well, touch you. Well, this is what we're going to do. love you guys. We love you. We're going to let you go so we can wrap the show. Happy Easter to you. We will see you, you next week. Hey, episode three, three, is that the one we hinted American males? Are we doing it? Call me. It's happening. Are we fucking doing it? Oh, Start advertising. Yeah. American, yeah. American males. American males. American males. American males. Next fucking Next week, week Scotty, Riggs. Scotty Riggs is going to be here with Buff the Stuff fucking Bagwell. Y'all still have to have my fucking bald ass here, the wrestling historian, and you have to have my fucking Mark here, the too. Mark. So we're still going to be here with two fucking legends. We're going to talk everything American males. It's going to be fucking amazing. We'll even talk probably a little bit of the resurrection because, I mean, I guess that's going to be on everybody's lips, too, right? Yes. Okay, cool. You guys, tune in next week. We're going to let Buff go. Buff, we love you. I'm going to call you in just Let's a go. minute. I'm going to call you in just a moment, my friend. Call me. I will. You know it. You know it. Love y'all. Love you. Just Love you, hang that thing up. Later. You got to hang up. You have, you have to hang up. Buff. Yeah, you got to hang up. See you guys. Later, bro. Later, bro. Beautiful. All right. Now, how do I fix that? I don't know. Oh, well. Here, fix oh, it. you had them all full oh, screen. Oh, you had that oh, the whole time. Don't worry. We're here. We're here now. 
All right, so you guys, happy Easter to you, motherfuckers. We we're we're doing it. Holy shit, we've had a second episode now. What the fuck is really Nick, going on? Coming through. Will, let's talk a little. Everyone, bit. pull it up on the second episode. Look at you guys. Late. You guys it's are awesome. here. I love the support. I love all of you, motherfuckers. You glorious bastards. Make sure you fucking like and follow and then like and follow on youtube and all that stuff let's do it all let's do it up because buff bagwell deserves it okay and look this motherfucker is here with us he could be a million places because he's done had tv shows and shit now like he don't need me i need him and yeah. we love him this is our friend now where he's here let's like let's subscribe let's follow let's do all the shit we can do to show this motherfucker we love him and I guess that's putting the first oh, episode in the chat right now on YouTube. The first episode the YouTube in the chat. Right there. That's the first episode, motherfuckers. Y'all can go watch it on YouTube. Fucking, we will upload this episode to YouTube tomorrow. So it'll be there too. And it'll be here on Twitch TV for like, what, another six, seven days or some shit? All right. So, so next Sunday. until we get affiliated. But, you know, it's going to be a minute because, you know, you can only do it on seven. It's like seven. Y'all know how it works to get affiliate. So it's going to take a little while. Maybe maybe me and Will will figure a way out to, like, stream some different type of wrestling just to get hey, the hours up for y'all. Uh, so y'all hit the follows. Y'all hit everything else for us easily. Good job. All right. Now, that's it.